just uh, last month. Joining me from Canberra is Senator James Patterson, the Opposition Spokesman on Home Affairs. James Patterson, thanks for joining us. The former ambassador's comments, is that sour grapes after his uh, apparently early removal from Australia or something much more serious? In my uh, observation, Shingo Yamagami was one of the most effective diplomats in Canberra during his time here representing any nation. He ensured that his government's perspective was well heard and well understood and he established a very strong rapport uh, with the government when he was here. He's also someone who comes to these debates very well informed. His own background is in the intelligence community and Japan has a unique and important perspective on China due to its proximity and its history, that Australia needs to hear. Um, it is very significant that a former ambassador is, in such a candid way, critical of this government's approach to the bilateral relationship with China and anxious about what that means for Japan and others in the region. And I think we should listen to him. I think we should take very seriously the warnings of friends like Shingo, um, who mean the best for us and mean the best for our bilateral relationship, but are worried about the direction we're heading in. Do you think he was told to, to shut up? He says government MPs uh, or, or MPs generally told him to shut up and uh, about China. And uh, do you think the government did have a hand in getting him recalled perhaps early? Unfortunately, Andrew, it's completely plausible that while he was ambassador here, he was told to tone down uh, his comments about the People's Republic of China. That is unfortunately exactly what some people have sought to do in this country. They've sought to shut down debates uh, about the PRC and its malign activities in the region and here at home and its own human rights uh, record. So that's completely plausible. Whether or not the Australian government had any role in sending him home early, I have no visibility of that. But I hope that's not the case because we should welcome truth from a friend. We should welcome honest engagement from a friend. And he was a friend of Australia. Japan is a very important friend of Australia. They share our perspective uh, and our interests and our values in the Indo-Pacific. There's no country that is better aligned than Japan on those issues. And it would be a real mistake if we didn't want to hear what they had to say. Now, Senator James Patterson, we last week had a boatload of apparently Chinese illegal immigrants land on the West Australian coast, undetected, I might add. The Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, has now urged you today not to exploit this. Here she is. I've been a bit disappointed in recent days to see people that I actually respect in the opposition coming out and, you know, telling untruths about this and um, calling into question aspects of this policy. Um, the commander of Operation Sovereign Borders has been really open. That provides an alternative narrative for people smugglers and I ask them to stop doing it. Are you in fact undermining border security by criticising this poor woman and uh, apparently telling untruths? Andrew, I think it is dangerous and irresponsible in a democracy to characterise normal political scrutiny by an opposition of a government of its performance as being somehow uh, det detrimental to our national security. I actually think robust uh, examination of the conduct and performance of a government is a very healthy part of our democracy and the facts speak for themselves. In the last two years, we've had 13 attempted pe people smuggling ventures come to our country. Three of them have broken through all the way to the Australian mainland deposited people and left again without being, without being detected. That is a virtually unprecedented event in the last 10 years of border protection policy in this country. And if that doesn't uh, call upon the opposition to hold the government to account, then I don't know what is. And unfortunately, the government has made policy choices which have led to this, in particular, the abolition of temporary protection visas and also their failure to deliver maritime surveillance and aerial surveillance of our northwestern approaches. I mean, the Border Force Commissioner himself, Michael Outram, has admitted that they are down 20% in terms of aerial surveillance and 12% in terms of on-sea surveillance. So it's no wonder that it's breaking through. And it's our job to call that out, to force the government to do better. The Albanese government's been very, very tough, not on China, but certainly on our allies in the Middle East, Israel. Very tough, uh, demanding uh, more and more explanations, saying he's not satisfied with the explanation so far for uh, Zomi uh, Frankham's uh, killing in, in Gaza, uh, appointing uh, an admiral to uh, go and investigate uh, Israel's investigation, etc., etc. What do you make of its reaction, uh, treating Israel like uh, perhaps it was guilty of a war crime here? Well, Zomi Frankham's death was tragic and it should not have happened and it is important that Israel and the IDF account for how that happened. 
And as a liberal democracy, it's going through that process right now. In fact, it's already conducted some part of its investigation and disciplined and sacked some of the soldiers involved. That's what we would expect and that's what Israel has done. Um, I note, though, Zomi Frankham is tragically not the first or only Australian who's been killed in this con conflict. Uh, Galit Kaboni was killed as well on the 7th of October in her home in Kibbutz Berry. I've stood in her lounge room uh, in her house where she was killed by Hamas terrorists. And I've got to say, we haven't had the same strong response from the Australian government about her death. Where was the Prime Minister's outrage about that? Where was his uh, action on that? It hasn't been the same, and I think that's very disappointing because all Australian lives are of equal birth and equal value, and their murders and their deaths deserve equal condemnation. I have to say, there's a guy called the Palestinian ambassador living uh, in Canberra. Uh, he called, they call, he's called the ambassador, he's met with Penny Wong, but she's never dragged him into uh, her office to give him a what for for the activities of Hamas. That's very interesting, very interesting contrast with the treatment of Israel. Uh, really. And if uh, the government spoke to China like it spoke to Israel, that would be interesting indeed. James Patterson, thank you so much indeed for your help. Thanks, Andrew.